Greetings, musical brothers and sisters. Today, I went to the music store and I bought myself a new toy. It's a, a Nectar Pacer. It's MIDI controller, a floor controller that you got. It's got a load of buttons on there so you can map various MIDI messages coming from each of these buttons. I think you can send um, six MIDI messages at a time um, and assign it to, to one of these buttons which is pretty cool. And also, the cool thing about this is it's got up to four foot switches. So if you've got a big looper setup, you can uh, run four foot switches to your gear where you're going to be playing music and where you want to start recording the loop from and have, you know, like a record button right next to your feet, um, wherever you are. And this is quite difficult to do when you've only got uh, one means of starting uh, recording a loop or, um, you know, um, muting tracks or whatever. So, let's check out what's inside the box. The most important part of the box is obviously going to be the manual. We're going to need this because we want to know how to program this. Cable. Cable comes with the USB cable. Okay. The Nectar Pacer. Look at that. We've got six buttons along the bottom. We've got five buttons along the top. I know from looking at the manual that we have um, banks A, B, C, and D. And then we have the six buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this preset selection says above on the button here, preset. And this, if you hold it, then you can choose, you know, the bank and the number, and that will load a preset. I think you can store up to 24 of those from what I'm reading in the manual. Um, it's got this dial here, I don't know what it does yet. Um, LCD display. On the back, we have power 9 volt, pedal power. If you've got a pedal board, you're a guitarist, you're in luck, you can just run that from your uh, power supply. USB for door integration, MIDI output, and this is what I need. Um, expression pedal one, expression pedal two. Cool, you can have two expression pedals, which makes it a lot like a Behringer FCB 1010, which is another, an older um, kind of thing like this, um, which has been around for a while, and it's got a lot of credibility. I was like, which one do I get? Do I get this Nectar, or do I get this, um, uh, the Behringer one? I went with this because it was newer, and it sounded, Interesting. I like Nectar. They, uh, I like them because I used to use Reason and I saw a keyboard once from Nectar, a controller keyboard, and I thought uh, that they basically had um, really awesome Reason integration from this controller keyboard and I thought I really wanted that, but I actually I missed that one. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, um, expression pedals um, and then four foot switches. So you can have dual foot switches in either of these or individual ones with the splitter on R1 and R2 they are relays for amps so if you go to old school you know like Marshall amps or something you can turn on and off effects or something I believe and, and other things uh, which is really cool you know so this is it awesome bit of kit um, in this video I want to continue um, by basically programming these buttons to do what I want with my EHX 45000 looper um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Here's the pacer. Um, set it up. Got my EHX 45000 foot controller here. This is for my looper. It's not the looper itself, but this is what I want to ultimately send the MIDI messages to. And I've got this here for the purpose of them demonstrating that um, uh, this play button, um, when it lights up, it's playing record button when it lights up it's recording so these are indicators that um, the programming we're going to do with the pacer um, is correct so the pacer when you start it up um, I'm on preset A1 and I want to edit this preset so I just turn this dial go to control press that and uh, here uh, the first button is flashing and this is the one that we're editing we can push other buttons um, here, this is um, the button selected for editing now. And when it's flashing, it means that it's the button selected for editing. So let's edit the first, um, not the first button actually, this one, because it's got a little play symbol here, and maybe I could use that um, 
So I'm going to map this play button to this play button of my EHX 45000. Um, from the menu you can choose um, steps. Um, this so you can select the number of steps that you wish to um, send. Actually it's the number of messages so you can send up to six messages and here the steps correspond to the six buttons and you can turn them on um, or you can turn them um, off apart from the first one and you're saying here that you only want to send one MIDI message. So um, the next option we have type um, and you can go in here and change the type um, but by default it's set to program change for this patch, I'm um, sorry this preset A1 um, so I'm going to go on to the next menu option which is program, now this is the program that um, I actually want to send, now if I take my EHX 45,000 manual and if you go to the back it tells you which program change messages um, it um, can accept and um, for program change number 100 it will push the play button for program change 105 it will push the record button this is exactly what we need and there's so many more options here push new button push quantize button um, push reverse button but yeah let's um, map the play button and the record button so going back to the pacer program is um, selected here all I do is press and then I can choose which program I want to send and I'm going to go for 100 for play There. Now, if I press it again, I believe it will um, go back. So I can do the same thing for this button here, which I'm going to use as my record button. Um, let's um, see how the play sounds first. So it seems that you can't actually preview the selection that you made. So you have to push the preset button to go back to um, to go out of edit mode. And now, if I press this button, it will play the EHX 45000, good, um, that mapped um, nicely um, and I can turn it off again. So um, let's uh, map the record button, go back into the uh, control menu, click, um, choose the control, we're going to go for switch number 6 that we're going to map the record to, go to the program option, click that, we can change the program, say to program hundred and. Five, which is the record option, let me just check that. Um, yep, 105, push record. 105, um, click to accept. And now we want to preview it, but we have to exit edit mode, so press preset. Now if I press this button, it should start recording, which it does, you can see the red record light up. Um, and we can stop um, recording. It will continue to play, um, which is cool, that's what the default behavior of the EHX is. So yeah, we can uh, play and stop, and we can um, record and play. And that's um, that was pretty easy, I mean, before I bought it today, I had a quick look through the manual, and I was able to at least program a bit of MIDI gear, my EHX 45000 looper. Um, you know, in the space of an hour, um, yeah. So, um, I was wondering, is there other things that this thing could do? Of course, it can send note messages, which is cool. So you could hook it up to a synthesizer, um, select the MIDI channel that you want to send it to. You know, I could, um, come out of my looper and go into, like, um, my Korg, um, Prologue or something, and then I can play, you know, map chords, because you can send six MIDI messages. You can um, send six note um, six note messages simultaneously. You know that's a, that's a pretty cool extended chord that you could map to just one switch and you play a guitar at the same time with some um, laying down some real nice background chords. Anyway, that's um, yeah. I'm gonna continue programming this, rig it into my setup, and um, super cool. So let me um, know if you um, have got something like this um, and um, how it fits in your setup or whether you've got one of these or whether you've got um, a Behringer FCB 1010 anything, just uh, leave a message down in the comments and um, keep on jamming <laughs>